Hello and once again welcome to the Brew Lab Cafe YouTube channel. Um, you can't see my face, you're welcome, uh, and I can't see yours, so we're fair. Um, today we are playing with the La Pavone Professional PL Lever coffee machine. Um, we're going to give it a bit of a service, which is something you need to do on all machines. We're not getting into that, just whatever. Let's get into it. Um, obviously, remove the bits and pieces we don't need. Um, we will need that. Hold on to that. Keep that handy. And I'm going to go all out. You don't have to remove this, but why not? It's removable, so let's remove it. Um, I have ordered a complete service kit from the internet. Make sure you get the right one. There is post and pre 2000. So they do actually look different on the group head. So you'll be able to see you should be fine. Um, shouldn't have any dramas over there. I've gone to the liberty of just pulling the circlips off these because that's really simple. If you can't do that, then you probably shouldn't be doing this. Um, both of those are gone. When you pull this guy off, pay attention. The front one is down low okay so that stays down the bottom otherwise if that's up the wrong way it will mess things up and potentially damage the machine so don't get that part wrong um, there is a little bush in there that comes with the kit as well we will be replacing um, pop something in there if need be and just crack those guys there that's done you can remove the group head from the machine um, yes I've kind of gone over this machine and loosened everything just for the sake of YouTube magic so, uh, you can do most of the job without removing this however there is one o-ring inside that I'm aware of uh, that you need to replace Italian threads. So, like I was saying, this is something that all machines need to have done, um, whether they're cheap, expensive. Um, they all have water seam inside them, they have moving parts, um, and water damages things eventually. Um, it's simple. So, pull the grip head off. Realistically, where there's nothing else there that I'm aware of that we're going to touch. Um, we may, I'll come back and double check, but there could be. There is an o-ring in here that I was talking about that needs to come out so using a pick if it doesn't come out on its own. Slide that bad boy off. If you haven't had much coffee this is a much harder job because your hands are as shaky as mine. O-ring off, pop it next to the new one. Um, that's as far as I know all we're going to do on that side. Um, now we're ready to remove the group head seal. So this is the main seal, which is a very important thing. Um, you cannot reuse these, so don't try to. Um, because it's just not going to make good coffee if you do try. So take your time, do it properly, um, order the right stuff and get it done. And you'll be rewarded with good coffee. You're generally not going to buy a machine of this colour, but if you're not interested in quality coffee. So, these are quite tricky to get out sometimes. Um, this machine isn't super old, so the seal is still good. Um, it was more of just a maintenance, kind of keep up to date with things. That's the seal. Come back to that in a sec. Um, pay attention when you do pull this guy out. It's very important that you get the seal up the right way. So the rounded edge goes in towards on that way, so upwards essentially. Okay, it's very, very important. You get that wrong, it's not going to work. I'm going to pop that next to the new one. And now, shower screen. Um, we do take a lot of care of this machine, so it is quite clean inside. Um, and we also use filtered water most of the time. 
Um, what I mean by that is we haven't been using it lately and this is what happens. So use filtered water, don't be a grub. Pull the piston out, um, that give it a good clean obviously before we put it back together. Um, clean everything of course. Everything clean, clean, clean. So the cleaner the machine is the better. Um, I know there's a lot of old school Italians out there that like to keep things dirty for the extra flavor, but we don't do that. Um, now, inside here there is a circlip. Um, if you can see down inside there, yeah. So there's a circlip. You will need circlip pliers. Uh, if you can do it without them, congratulations. They're incredible. Uh, let me go this way. And this is going to be fiddly, so I'm putting this tool together properly. Alright, so as simple as popping that circlip out. I can't show you and do it at the same time because I'm not that good. But that's the circlip there. Okay, got to pull that guy out. Pop it next to the new one. brass washer in there of some sort. Um, I don't know what this does, but it comes with a new one. So we're going to try to take it out. Um, and I have no idea how it comes out. So, I have a feeling. Push it from the back. It will come out. And I am correct. Yeah. So there's that little brass guy there with the four little holes in it. it. Comes with a new one in the kit. And then there is also a clear rubber seal behind that. Uh, this one's a bit tricky apparently. You've got the right tools. So you'll see there's a clear seal in there as well. We've got to pull that guy out because we're replacing that as well. As far as I know, that's all you can do there. Um, could be wrong, I have no idea, but let's have a look inside here. That's it. So, pull that apart, give it a clean. Everything clean. Um, there is some calcium buildup, I believe it's calcium. Um, it just sort of, sometimes you need to run a descaler through these things. I haven't, I've just been using water as clean as possible as often as possible um, and look it's, it's pretty good considering you know this machine's probably about a year old and it gets used most days and gets left on for way too long and it's still pretty good so that is most of what we're going to do ready um, and these guys here come off on the piston Okay, and they do go up a certain way as well, so pay attention because if you get that wrong, that's going to suck. So if you're holding the piston upright, the way it would be on the machine, the open side goes up. Okay, so the open side there, upwards. So. We can kind of start the assembly again before I forget where everything goes. Like I said, give everything a good clean. And the kit also came with two different lubricants. Um, there's a clear one that goes on the piston and shaft seals. And then there's one that goes on rollers and pins. So if it goes on rubber, it's clear. If it goes on metal, it's white. Easiest way. Um, if it goes on both, it's clear. The rubber is the important one. Um, so, let's start with the piston seals. Okay, just lubricate the side that's touching for now. Okay. Pop those guys in.
this is about as hard as I thought it would be this section. Um, very, very, very tight seals. I'm going to take that from the other direction. Making sure that that first loop gets inside and then follow it around. That's going to be much better. Um, you may find you have to start feeding it in and then gently without piercing the seal sort of rotate it piece by piece. I'm going to use something a little less sharp. Probably still too sharp. Okay, that's number one in. Clear lube on the rubber. Just use a little bit of pressure, but obviously we don't want to pierce these seals because then they're just not going to work. All right, those guys are in. They're ready to go in once we lubricate them, but we can do that shortly. Um, I'm not going to do that one yet. What we are going to do is that clear seal. Lubricate and pop that guy in. That's in there, if you can see. And then a little brass guy. Um, this may take a little bit of force. So I haven't done this, obviously. And it doesn't necessarily locate in there. But you just want to make sure you get it below where that circlip has to go. Which shouldn't take too much, but I'm just going to give it a little bit to make sure easier later and there we go so now the circuit is ready to go in the new one of course so I'd love to film this so you guys can see it properly but there's not a chance I am filming and doing this job at the same time um, if you've ever paid attention to a circlip there's generally one side that is slightly rounded like a, a chamfered edge and one side that is sharp you always want the sharp edge on the outer edge which means it's harder to take it out, obviously. Just going to move around on the flies, make it easier. Make sure that that snaps into place on both sides. So if you check that, that guy is all located and ready to go. So that part's good. Now I figured while we're here we may as well start popping that guy in. Obviously slide this guy back into place. Um, make sure it's nice and tight. That wasn't actually as tight as I would have liked it, liked it to have been from factory. So I'm going to do something. Using circuit pliers that are 90 degree. Let's give that a bit of a, just that a little bit of an ugga dugga. If you don't know what that is, go away. Or you're probably from another country. So, another seal. Just lubricate that guy like crazy. Doesn't matter. 
it's going to get sort of squashed in there anyway. Slide that guy into place. pretty either way it'll seal but you know, obviously want your machine to look as good as possible because that's the most important part of coffee right give it a good nip up there probably are torque specs for this um, whatever this guy here um, by the time you've used this a few times that seal is buggered. Um, it's actually completely changed shape. It is a normal round washer. We're going to chuck a bit on there, even though it's probably not going to make a lot of difference. Yeah, probably will actually. I feel I can go on. That way, but now it's done. Need to tighten it because there's no water in it. Now there are still a lot of seals to go, obviously including these guys. Um, we are going to install this guy first. Um, now I've been told to be very careful with these because they're brand new. They're tricky to install. Um, they kind of want to fold back as you install it. So be careful and take your time. Should go to plan. Oh, I can see exactly what they mean by that. Um, it definitely wants to grab rather than slide in. running flat blade, flat blade screwdriver just enough to sort of slowly pop that guy in again be gentle you don't you don't want to damage your seal now otherwise you'll be waiting a few days for another one before you can finish it all right that's the first one in Once they're in, I would highly recommend to have a bit more lube underneath and just on the, it looks like plastic, just where those seals go against, just so when we start to move things around, it's got plenty of lube there, make things a little bit nicer. Um, so that's flowing really nice now. Um, it's actually better than it was when it was new. So now the shower screen can go back on and I'm going to put it back on its back and this new seal goes in. Now remembering that the curved edge on this seal goes up, okay? Plenty of lube on this one. Um, it's not going to go anywhere once it's in. As you saw they're very tricky to take out. It takes a lot of pressure and you actually need to use group handle like most machines these days to force the basket into the machine 
So okay, and that's with no bar, no uh, basket in the group handle. Um, you can do that without the hand, the, with the basket in. It's going to take a serious amount of force. So make it easy on yourself. We will set that back in there better shortly, but that will do for now. And this guy can go in the new one, and that's using the white paste because it's metal on metal. holes down so the front hole is down low um, they probably should have popped these off earlier as well no I don't need to there's no new ones so once you're at this stage grab pin and one of the circlips and just do that on the bench to make it easy on yourself okay so assemble two you know both of those with just one circlip each So using the white paste, metal on metal once again. And before you go any further, make sure that the piston is nice and square with the machine. It's just going to help later. So that can dangle for now, it doesn't matter. And then you have the last circlip go on going on as well. And that is the hardest part of this whole job done, realistically. Um, it's really not a hard job. Um, there's nothing super special in tools here. Um, probably the most weird thing with the circuit pliers and it's really not that crazy. Alright, so that guy's on there. Um, before you go any further, pop this guy on first. Um, it does have a chamfered edge on the inside. So if you can see that, it actually rolls. Make sure that that circle edge is down, okay? There is a little bit of a theory behind, you should count the threads as you take it off, but whatever, it'll work, probably. Um, you should use a second 14 mil there. Because I'm old school, I'm going to use one of these guys. I'm in trouble for using this around Dad. Okay. Um, let's pop that handle back on here. Okay, so now we've got the new stuff floating around. We've got one, two, three O rings that I have no idea what they're for. So I'm assuming that they're going to have something to do with the steam wand. Um, I could be wrong, I don't know. Um, I'm not going to bugger around with it. This machine's working perfectly fine. I'll probably play with it off camera and have a look, but I'm not going to bore you guys with that. What I am going to bore you with is a couple of new little additions. So this is what it comes with. Um, it's fine, but it, it gets very dirty very easy, and it's so hard to clean inside these guys. So I opted and we've gone naked. So this guy's not only looks better and you know cool on camera, but it does make, in my opinion, better coffee. Um, that's my opinion, I could be wrong. So basket in and let's get that seal seated really well. That's that guy done. And that's 
pretty much the machine done. Um, there's not really much more you can do on these. Um, and I do recall, if, if anyone did watch my earlier videos, they may recall I was chatting about a couple of upgrades I'd like to make on this machine. Um, we're about to do one, and to be honest, this morning I learnt how important this is. Um, to put a thermal sticker on the group head. Um, so we're actually going to pop that guy right there, and that's going to tell us how hot the group head is. Um, I was experimenting this morning with coffee. I turned it on and made a coffee the instant it was at pressure, and which meant the group head was a lot cooler than if you were to leave it and walk away. And it was honestly one of the best espresso shots I've ever had in my life. Um, I'm not kidding. I, I'm really, really not. So I left it for another 10, 15 minutes afterwards, made another coffee, dosing exactly the same, tamping exactly, exactly the same. And it was, you know, definitely more on the acidic side of things, nowhere near as enjoyable. Um, and the only variable there was that it was very hot, you know, to the point where I couldn't touch. Uh, the group head. So I'm going to go and pop this guy on and that means in the future I can really dial in you know the temperature I want this to be at when I pull a shot. So as simple as that and that's going to ensure for a better coffee. Um, really really simple maintenance on this thing. Um, it wasn't super expensive invoices floating around and for all of those upgrades and the seals was 260 bucks now keep in mind that $135 of that was just the group handle so the seals were 68 bucks and the temp sticker was 22 bucks which is insane but whatever um, so for $70 worth of parts and then a little bit of shipping which was 10 bucks it's like new um, and we can continue making beautiful coffee um, if I've missed anything please let me know if you know where these seals go here let me know save me stuffing around with time and mucking you know things up um, but again I, I'm pretty sure they just come from the steam one somewhere there's not really anything else it could be in my opinion but anyway that'll do for now thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time guys bye